Welcome back everyone to the XHL. Hope you guys enjoyed all of the premiere action in the quarterfinals because we're about ready to get underway in the highlight reel edited version of our next four games of the XHL playoffs here in season number two. So right out of the gate, we got Riker Cooper for the Kalamazoo Wings making some nice stops there. But Houston will end up getting the first goal of the game with Matthias Horn, a rookie from the last draft class in season number one. Now take a look here. We got a little breakaway here for Strickland. He's making a move on Riker Cooper, but he makes the save. And then Strickland follows it up, trying to get his own rebound. But take a look at these shots. Good defense by Kalamazoo to keep it away from their young goaltender. Here comes Houston again. Nice shot on Cooper. Makes another save. So we got eight minutes left in the first period. And then we've got a goal here for Kalamazoo. No, they're going to wave this off. Looks pretty clean to me. Take a look at the replay here. We've got a nice clean look, good shot, and just a rebound that trickled on in. So I don't see much goalie interference there, and they will end up giving the goal back to Kalamazoo. So that's Eric Radford here with the goal, and now we're tied one to one. Let's jump here to the second period. We just kicked off the second period, and right out of the get-go, we've got a lot of movement here. Good passing all the way around here for Houston. Kalamazoo just can't find a way to get it out of their grasp man look at this they are just slow to attack the puck we do have a little tie up here in the boards and now the wings are breaking out let's see if they can get something going here got to get a shot off on Braden Holpe we got some trailers trailing skaters there but unfortunately they can't get a good clean shot off and that's going to be a goal here for Shepard that's Thomas Shepard a one-year pro who's part of last season's roster here in season number one so two to one Houston good movement all the way around and we are going to get a GG9 replay on this Jake Kingley goal because I want to take a look at one thing in particular look at Riker Cooper's head you see where his mask was he didn't know where the puck was so we got a lot of movement there he was screened he couldn't see it and I don't blame him there was just way too much traffic up front and then this is going to be a goal here for Shepard again number two for him on the night and the Cosmos are now taking a 4-1 to one lead. Kalamazoo will get a goal here with 3.4 seconds left to go in the game. And you can kind of figure that's it. Houston gets a win. They will advance to take on Dakota in the semifinals of our XHL playoffs in season number two. So unfortunately there for Kalamazoo, they gave it everything they had. 35 shots today compared to 27. They did lay some hits on Houston. So they weren't afraid. They didn't back down, but they just they weren't as talented. Riker Cooper, I thought, all things considered, played pretty good, pretty well. He just is the lone star of the team. They don't really have anybody else other than him. As far as like our overall rating goes, he's definitely one of the top players on the team. But Shepard, probably your player of the game here for Houston. Two goals. You could argue that Braden Holtby was the player of the game here tonight. 35 shots against him, 33 saves. Did give up the one goal very late in the game, but... I'm giving it to Thomas Shepard. I think he earned it. Five goals and you got two of them. I think he did your job. Now let's get this one going. We got Tucson against Albuquerque, a Western Conference rivalry. And he saw the big hit right out of the get-go. And look at this. Back behind the net, Steinbrenner here with the first goal for Albuquerque. They get on top, one to Zippo. But that doesn't mean that Tucson is going to lay down lightly. We got a lot of hockey left, guys. We got a lot of hockey left. So big shot there on Saul Goodman, makes a nice glove save here. And we got a little turnover battle happening here, just back and forth we go. Look at look at the moves. Oh, that's beautiful. Christopoulos with the second goal for Albuquerque, going up two to nothing. We're gonna get a GG9 replay here. They just can't control the puck. Talking about Tucson there, but look at the deeks, look at the moves on Lion Trees. And you wanna talk about turnovers? Here's another one. Turnover here in their own end of the ice, and that's going to tic-tac-toe Jesse Pinkman with a goal. It is now 3 to nothing, Albuquerque. We're still in the first period, guys, and we've got Saul Goodman making a nice save right there. So 2.30 left to go. Again, more shots on Saul Goodman, and he stands tall and makes the glove save. Let's go to the second period. We just started this one. 18 minutes in the second period. Good passing. Tucson looking for their first goal of the game. Are they going to get it? Yes, they will. Nice shot by Buck Wilson. He says, let's just not keep passing this thing around. Let's do something with it. Gets the first goal here for Tucson in the postseason. Tucson's not done. Look at this. More. 
pressure on Saul Goodman. Take another look, another shot. Eight minutes left to go here in the second period. Look at these moves. Good goal, got Goodman to move left. Camp went right, and that's his first goal of the playoffs. So three to two game, Tucson. Look at the passing, oh, it's a turnover. Oh, Albuquerque, you gave it to him. McCluskey gets the goal, we are now tied up. McCluskey with the turnover, he just kept fighting it. No, oh, what is this? What is this? We gotta get a replay on this. Lion Trees lets this one in, look at this. It, he didn't know where it was. He lost track of it. Renwick gets credited with the goal. It's now four to three, and I just feel terrible about Tucson at this point. That sucks. Let's jump ahead here. Late second period, Richard Pierce with a backhand goal. He got his own rebound and then put the backhand back in. It's now five to three. So Tucson needs a goal here. They gotta kick this thing into high gear. You got 15 minutes left to go, and your playoff dreams are over if you can't tie this thing up. Buck Wilson, nice pass. Good goal, second of the night for him. Tucson just looking to get another one up on the board. A lot of time left, but another turnover. Tucson gives it up, and Richard Pierce makes a move. He scores, and guys, that's it. That's the game winner right there. The final goal there for Albuquerque seals the deal. They will kill the rest of the game out. And Tucson, your second place team. They made it to the finals last year against Charleston. They go down in the first round. So this is kind of, I love the, the one game knockout in the XHL playoffs, man. It just leads to a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, games that are at stake, high stakes type games. I love it. But take a look at that graphic, man. 0 for 5 on the power play for Tucson. If you want to find a reason either why Albuquerque won or Tucson lost, that would be one of them. 0 for 5. So give credit where credit is due. Albuquerque able to kill those penalties off, not allowing a single goal. But also, give credit to Albuquerque for creating a lot of turnovers. A lot of those goals on trees were from turnovers. So, you know, maybe you might think that Tucson actually lost the game versus Albuquerque winning the game. That could be one way to look at it. So let's get out here to Tampa Bay versus Orlando. Look at this. Alexander Washington, the rookie, getting a goal. I don't know why he passed the puck. Like, once he got possession of it, he had a clear, wide-open lane to the net. Like, look at this. And then he kicks it out to D, then moves in with a backhand, and somehow gets a goal. And I love that. He gets pushed into the net. <laughs> Just hilarious. All right, so we got a 1-0 game here at Tampa Bay, but Orlando gets a response goal by Olsen. We'll kick it into high gear here in the second period after this beautiful save, but oh, a bad mistake right there, trying to really just make another play, make the extra play, but it's going to lead to a goal here for Tampa Bay. He makes a beautiful save and then tries to kick this thing out, and the puck gets bounced around by his own teammate, and Pinkard picks it up and scores, and then there's a beautiful goal by Roman Reigns going high side on the glove. His first goal of the playoffs, and Tampa Bay up now three to one. Second period here late, De Flamingo, Custom player there for Orlando, their best player, his first goal of the postseason. Gets Orlando back into the game. So a 3-2 game, we got a power play opportunity here for Tampa Bay, some nice saves by the goaltender. Now the penalty's been killed, and Tampa Bay still has it in Orlando's zone. They do get a turnover there, possibly. Nope, Tampa Bay's still hanging on. They got some good moves to its goal. Nice shot, another rebound, good save again. Just cover this thing up. Yeah, he must have learned his lesson there. So here comes De Flamingo with a nice shot on Davenport, but he's going to make the save. Seven minutes, 25 seconds left to go. Davenport stands tall yet again. So it's getting down to the wire here. Tampa Bay's really got to lean on the goaltender, Dirk Davenport, to really come through in these final minutes. Look at this save. Unbelievable save there by Dirk Davenport with the glove hand with less than two minutes to go. Liad Letterman taking a big hit, gets the insurance goal, and that is all she wrote, guys. Tampa Bay will advance into the semifinals to take on the winner of our next game, either Atlanta or Charleston. So kind of a cool little storyline here. Orlando goes down to Tampa Bay. They were the inspiration for the team name here for Tampa Bay. Originally, they were the Orlando Sun Mutts, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just have Orlando, the Solar Bears, into this league. Get a little rivalry going there down in Florida. 
I think it's hilarious. Tampa Bay Sun Mutts, Orlando Solar Bears. It's great. It's great. But I'm happy that our XHL team got it done, and they won, because your customs are over there. Now, for Domingo de Flamingo, maybe eventually he wants out of Orlando if they can't keep improving. But making the playoffs is a good step here for any ECHL type of squad here. So let's not delay any further. Let's get into the next matchup here. We got Charleston against Atlanta. Good goalie matchup here. We have Jamal Kendrickson for Atlanta, the rookie goaltender, against the champion, the defending champion goaltender here, Keegan Finch, the playoff MVP, by the way. Look at this save right there, the glove hand. Keegan Finch not doing too bad so far in the first seven minutes, but we got a three on two situation here, but oh, Keegan Finch, you gotta get back up, baby. Let's go. Off the post off the post so it's still nothing nothing puck gets rattled back into the corner we got a deflection here but oh we got a cutter that's evan veerling cuts up the middle right into the slot area and that's a goal here for atlanta but now we get a response goal by charleston that is paul mcavoy the custom player we don't see a lot of paul mcavoy but he does get a goal here so 1-1 one, one game and now the goaltenders just start to give up some goals here late into the first period. That's Evan Veerling again, so he's already on fire. No pun intended there with the Atlanta Flames reference, but so far two to one, second period. Ty Franklin gets a goal, and now it's three to one Atlanta. Let's see if they can get another one tacked on here. Some good passing, unbelievable passing. There to Sens Regalwood. We gotta get a GG9 replay on that. Just take one more look at the tic-tac-toe passing. Look at a little backhanded move right there, a little pass, boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Jaleel Neal setting everybody up. That's a great line, man. Atlanta's first line is just something special here, but Kendrickson's gotta be a little bit better right now as Charleston, the champs, they're starting to find a way to come back here. Atlanta is on the power play, Keegan Finch. Nothing you can really do that is Kimo Vertinen getting a power play goal for the Flames. 5-2 game here. Good passing again here by Charleston. It's now 5-3. But is it a little bit too late? 50 seconds left to go here. Charleston. We do have the extra man out, but another big hit laid on by the Flames. And Charleston's man, they can't get up. But, oh, we got a little turnover here with 23 seconds. It's Apollo Love, the custom player, getting the goal. It's now 5-4. But, again, is it a little bit too late? 19 seconds left to go here. Another chance for Charleston. Knocking it down to 14, 13, 12, 11. Jaleel Neal with the empty net. He's trying to make a couple moves. He can't handle the puck. Seven seconds left. Charleston, little saucer pass. Here comes Nault with the moves on the net, but Kendrickson poke checks it away. And Charleston will lose. Oh, one goal. That's all you needed. They had the perfect opportunity to get one, and that is a heartbreaking loss. Heartbreaking loss. The dreams and the aspirations of trying to go back-to-back -back have been spoiled by the Atlanta Flames rookie goaltender. Unbelievable play right there on both ends. you got to give credit to that saucer pass, man. That was unbelievable. And then Nault, with a few of those moves, it looked like it was going to be an easy goal. I mean, we've seen these highlights for 20 some odd episodes now that looked like it was gonna be an easy goal for that skater Nault and he didn't get it off because Kendrickson was there he made an unbelievable play hats off to the rookie goaltender man getting that poke check that that won them this game that won them this game I mean I'm convinced but guys your playoff picture has been updated it is up on your screen that was a really fast-paced High octane, high energy, highlight reel. And I'm, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed that. But now we're off to the semifinals. And we've got Seattle, Albuquerque, Houston, Dakota. That's going to be a really fun matchup there in the western side. And then we got Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Richmond, and Brooklyn. So some good storylines coming out of these matchups here. So, of course, Seattle and Albuquerque. Seattle being the favorites out of the western side. They were the best team record-wise. But Albuquerque's the hottest team in the Western Conference. So can they upset Seattle? That's going to be a really cool matchup to watch out for. Then, of course, Houston and Dakota. Those two teams, they hate each other. And Kansas City hates Dakota as well. But Kansas City got the last laugh as far as that matchup goes. So really big-time rivalry happening there in the Western side. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, 
going to be a cool one there. They got some really good offensive pieces there on both teams, so it should be a high-scoring matchup. And then some good goaltenders there with Robert Borhoff and Caden Primo. And, of course, we got to watch out for Nicholas Dykstra, the Rookie of the Year there for Richmond. So can he lead the charge for an upset over Brooklyn? Newfoundland almost had him. Newfoundland almost had him, so we'll see how that goes. But some interesting storylines happening here across the XHL playoffs. I'll see you guys next Friday for the semifinals and the conference finals. So I'm going to plug in all six games. we got four here in the, semi, in the semis, and then I'm going to get those two matchups there in the conference finals next Friday, which means next Sunday, not Super Bowl Sunday, but next Sunday I'm going to be live streaming the finals. So we have yet to determine who that's going to be, but it should be a fun one. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. We're getting ready to move on to season number three here fairly quickly. Hope you guys are ready for it. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and peace.